Hey guys, Josh Lukowitz here, and today we're going to be looking at um, a tutorial using Adobe After Effects CS 5.5, and what we're going to be discussing today um, is how to make a shot look more cinematic. Um, a couple things you can do um, when treating footage. Today I'm going to be actually color correcting, um, adding some black bars, doing a little stabilization, just to really get your shot looking um, a little more cinematic, something you'd see on uh, a movie screen rather than something shot at home. So we're going to start right ahead with After Effects. I've got it open here. Um, a point that I'd like to note is I'm actually going to use uh, After Effects for this shot, which does not need any audio. Uh, now, After Effects does not export audio uh, files. It will, you know, it will not take the audio from your clip and export. That is, is you know, compositing and special effects program so if your shot does need audio you're gonna wanna have um, you know that file saved somewhere and then relink the two clips um, perhaps in you know a nonlinear editor such as Final Cut or Premiere or Avid or what have you anyway so we're gonna go right ahead and go to file import now I have my footage on a separate external drive rather than on my main system drive I recommend that for uh, large video files it just will help your system run a lot cleaner Many people will say leave it on the you know on your um, computer's drive because um, you know it will read faster. While that's true, I generally like to leave my drive uh, running my OS or whatever um, operating system you might have. It just you know seems like it's a better idea than having those large files reading. Anyways, we're gonna go and grab here it is G drive, and we actually have footage from a horror film I helped the friend shoot um, a couple days ago for his writing class it's clip 18 so I'm gonna open that up and once we have it we're gonna bring it into our timeline into our composition so here it is uh, I'm just gonna kinda scrub through it real quick if you notice we've got this shot um, it's it's really a tracking shot so go ahead and do a RAM preview real quick or preview that shot um, you're gonna notice it's taking a while that is because it's using your computer's random access memory your RAM to try to get the shot looking um, as it did when you shot it. You'll notice that the frame rate up here uh, is not what we shot at. In this case, it was 24 frames per second. That is because you're, you know, in this case, my computer uh, can't really keep up with not only screen recording, but doing um, a preview. But, you know, if I go back, I'm going to try to play it back and see what we get. Yeah, it's pretty close uh, for a second there. And, you know, we'll, the frame rate will drop in order to try to play it back. Anyways, the shot we have, um, you'll notice a couple things. You have some of your footage uh, in this case, although I shot on a glide cam, looking a little bouncy. Uh, you'll see kind of some up and down movement and whatnot, so we're going to stabilize that. In addition, um, you know, the lighting is very good. We shot outside with a Panasonic AG HMC40 uh, prosumer camera, which has very good outdoor uh, capabilities in terms of color re reproduction and what have you. Um, we shot at 24 frames per second. 24 is the film standard if you're going to use um, you know, a different camera, you're generally going to be shooting at 30 frames per second or 60. 24 will instantly give your footage uh, a more cinematic look. It's the cinema standard. So that's one thing uh, if you're looking to make your shots a little more cinematic. I'd say start shooting at 24 frames a second if possible or playing back at 24 frames per second. Uh, we're actually also, I just made a mistake, going to change our frame rate to 24, which is what we are uh, currently using our footage at. Anyways, there it is. Anyway, so you'll see there's some bouncing and whatnot. We're going to see what we can do about that. So, firstly, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the clip, and I'm going to go File, Import, and I have a file saved. It's a PNG file of black bars. And black bars, you will see on movies to uh, give a little more of a cinematic look. Uh, generally, black bars are because of... Um, the wide angle used in many films. So I just have a PNG file I grabbed off YouTube, or uh, Google rather, and I'm going to open that. It's a picture file, a PNG, and or a ping, and I'm going to bring that in above, and drag that and bring it above our video clip. And you can see here the length. I'm going to drag it over to match up, and there it is. It appears, and you'll notice that it's not really sitting very well. It did snap center, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from the top and bring it up, let's say to right about there. That's pretty good. And then we're going to go and drag sideways like that and a little more in. Okay, that's pretty good. So you can see already we're starting to, you know, make our way into a more cinematic shot. 
you're gonna make make sure that uh, starts with your other clip at the same time. Otherwise, you'll have one appear before the other. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this original shot and stabilize it. So, although we shot on the stabilizer, we're gonna uh, you know on a um, I apologize, I'm blanking on the name. Oh, right. We shot on a stabilizer system, a glide cam, uh, which helps with shaky footage. We still see a little bit of that, so we're going to clean it up um, using a new effect called dis uh, a new effect called warp stabilizer. So we're going to effect distort warp stabilizer. Let that open up, and it's instantly going to start looking at the background, and it's going to try to take the bumpiness or shakiness out of your footage. And the way it's going to achieve that is really by trying to reframe your shot. I have all the automatic settings here um, in the finished product you'll see. I just tweak them a little bit, you know. And if you have some time, I definitely recommend trying to see what, um, you know, what the percentages that you mess around with or uh, some of the settings here will get you. Uh, right now, Subspace Warp and Stabilize Crop Auto, what that's going to do is it's going to take this frame and really uh, zoom in a little bit and then kind of move it around without your eye being able to see that and you're gonna kind of get this gliding effect uh, by stabilizing the footage so it's really changing the perspective of how you're looking at it uh, and it, it does a pretty good job you can see it's gonna take a little bit of time so we'll be right back with the rest of the tutorial alright and we're back with our tutorial and now that I've let the stabilizer run through I'm going to let you guys see really quick, a quick RAM preview of it. Um, I did cut the clip a little bit shorter, mind you, but if you notice, you'll see a much smoother shot, a lot less um, jittering up and down, especially on the y-axis, um, and just an, a better overall looking shot. So I'm just going to conform this really quick because it's just going to allow us to only see um, a smaller part of our, our workflow, which makes a lot of sense um, that the clip is smaller. Anyway, so I, what I've done is I trimmed it down a little bit, let that run through, and if you if you take a look really quick as a comparison, you've got this shot here. All right, we start off, and you just kind of got this bouncing. Um, you know, you're gonna see our talent walking from the left. There he is, and you can see this kind of up and down bouncing that's going on, right? And then we go back to what we just saw here, and you'll notice it is a much smoother shot. Uh, it's not being played back at a different frame rate. Uh, the resolution is half just for the um, quick render time we have. But anyways, you see we have a much smoother shot. So we're not quite done yet. Um, now we're going to move into color correction. So I'm going to go back to my project tab. And now I'm going to select this clip, which is the video clip, not the black bars. And I'm going to go over here now to color correction under effects and presets. And I'm going to scroll down. We're going to start with um, brightness and contrast. So I'll double click there. And here we go. Here are our effects. Um, this is the effects tab once again. So brightness is fine. I'm not going to mess with that. But um, a lot of movies will have a lot of contrast. And there's, um, you know, the term is crushing the blacks, uh, meaning that all of the dark colors in your shot should be brought out more. Uh, and your lighter, sh you know, your lighter uh, pieces of the shot will be more contrasted from these dark pieces. So if I start toggling the contrast up, you're going to see the trees are starting to look a little bit darker. We have a little more of a dramatic feel. Uh, so this is about 19. We're going to sit at about 25, and that's even a lot. But um, you know, now you're just getting a little more of a dramatic shot. Right, you can see the actor's shirt is a little bit darker now. And the contrasting colors, you know, you have the shadows here from the trees and whatnot. Uh, or the shadows that are cast on his shirt are a much um, are much more defined. So that's where we're going to start with our color correction. Then we're going to go a little bit further, and we're actually going to mess with the curves. So I'm going to double click here on curves, and here are the curves for our video. So I'll bring up the actor one more time. We'll toggle to where he is. So right about there. Okay. And here are the curves or the information of the color in your shot. So I'm going to just click right here, and I can warp the curve. So you'll see this is just bringing the colors all the way down and now all the way out. And now if I want to change anything I just did besides our command Z, which will, or um, I'm not sure what it is on Windows. I believe it's going to be Alt Z. Um, you can also hit this button right here, which will just conform it back to what it was originally, a straight line. So we're actually going to go from RGB, which is all the colors. We're going to target the reds first. I'm going to start here at the middle. I'm going to bring the reds down a little bit. 
And I can see the greens are really sticking out. So we're going to come back in here again and pull the greens out a little bit. And now we're actually going to take the blues and toggle them up a little bit. Okay. Looks like we actually took a little too much green out. So I'm going to bring a little bit more back up. Actually, maybe right about there. And the reds. Drop it a little bit more. Now you've got a little bit of a color corrected shot. Starting to look better. Uh, here you can also save. Um, if you hit this the floppy, you can actually save your curves um, information as a preset. You know, if you're perhaps doing an entire video, and in this case, like we were an entire movie uh, or short, short film, we save the color information so we could just open it up really quickly using this. Again, so it would conform to each clip. Uh, and lastly, we're going to go into hue and saturation over here. So double click that. And we're going to, in this case, drop the saturation. Um, so the saturation, oversaturated shot will look something like this. Uh, I don't know, maybe something you've seen in a bad 90s music video. I'm not sure, uh, what have you. And here's what a shot with the contrast dropped will look like. And the contrast is the contrast of colors. Um, so you can see we've got a little bit more um, moodiness to our shot. It looks a little desaturated, which is a uh, stylistic kind of approach. Uh, I, I think desaturated shots look pretty nice. And we're pretty much about done here. You know, we've, we've really evolved from, um, you know, what we had originally without any of our effects to um, a, fairly, a fairly cinematic shot. So I'm just, oops, sorry. I'm just going to actually show you really quick what the final product would look like uh, if I rendered out. By the way, if you're looking to render your composition, you're going to go appear to composition. You're going to go to uh, Add to Render Queue. And right down here, you'll have some of your settings. In this case, I leave best settings in my output module to lossless. Um, it's going to make a .mov file, which is a QuickTime file, which is going to be huge um, in many cases, over a gigabyte, even for a very short clip, because you have all the After Effects information saved. I would open it up with something like Adobe Media Encoder, um, any program that would drop that to a smaller file, perhaps an MP4. Um, what have you, but anyway, so that is how you would render out the clip and lucky for you I have already rendered it out. So here's what our shot looks like stabilized um, color corrected and Black barred here you go And there's the shot if you notice the shakiness is gone on the y-axis up and down. Um, you know, we have our black bars in there and our color correction. And from our original shot, it is a pretty stark difference here. I'll show you maybe a still. So if we go right about here, I'll minimize this a little bit. And then let me go in and grab the original, the original file, which is right here. Um, Bring that down in size so you can see a comparison. Bring this over. Okay. So you can see there's a pretty big difference uh, between the two shots. You've got a much more cinematic looking shot here with a couple of quick couple of quick um, adjustments. Like I said, there will be no audio with this clip because it did come out of After Effects. You can always add that in later on for your shots, but I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, hopefully we're going to have another in the future, and best of luck to you in making your shots a little more cinematic. Thanks a lot.